Hi guys, Rob from Rob's Model Cars and today you join me for part 7 of the How to Build the Hobby Design LB Aventador. Now in the last step uh, I showed you how to apply all the decals to the body um, and then I mentioned that I was going to add a, another clear coat over the top. Uh, I've done that now so all of these decals are embedded underneath the clear uh, and I've done some paint outs uh, now I've painted out the under the hood area here in matte black, uh, also painted out behind these side windows uh, and down through the door opening here as per how it was painted by AutoArt. Um, and I've started to reassemble the model also. So um, we've put these little uh, mesh pieces in the back, uh, refitted the tail lights, um, the rear spoilers back on, which is still functional. That's that part there. Um, I've also added the uh, radiators in here, little plastic covers and the uh, photo etch mesh that goes in front of those. Um, and I've also fitted the headlights as well. So this is how the headlights fit back in as per the original model. Um, I had to just adjust a little bit to get this headlight lens in on this uh, left hand side I had to just trim a little bit of the actual black headlight insert I didn't touch the outer lens at all I just trimmed that a little bit just to get that headlight lens in uh, the other one went straight in so um, if you have any issues getting the headlights and the lenses back into the uh, headlight buckets here um, just keep dry fitting them and make sure that you can get the headlight in and the clear lens uh, fits back in and it's flush with the body all the way around um, Don't try and glue anything in until you uh, test fit and make sure that everything is in flush uh, And then you'll have no problems when it's time to glue um, So pretty much all of these steps are just the reverse of uh, how we disassembled the auto art model so um, If you don't remember how it went back together again, just re refer to my earlier video um, and another tip also, if you're new to customizing models, um, get your smartphone out and actually take some photos of the model as you're disassembling it. Uh, and that also helps with the areas that are painted also. If you can't remember how it was painted, uh, if you take some photos first, um, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to uh, do the detail painting and to reassemble the model. So... This can nearly be uh, assembled further. Uh, this is as far as I've got today before I uh, do this video. Uh, and I've also worked on the, uh, the rear engine lid now, as I mentioned earlier. I've just painted the back of this in matte black. Um, I just use a Tamiya enamel for that and I just hand paint this with a brush. And then the actual engine lid windows, uh, they just re-glued in from behind the back. Uh, and whenever I'm gluing clear parts, uh, I always use the Bob Smith Industries Super Gold Plus. Uh, now this gold label super glue, it is non-fogging uh, and there's no fume, so it won't, uh, it won't make the clear parts go milky. Um, and that was the same with the headlight lenses as well. Um, I only applied just a little bit of glue to the edge of the body where this lens fits and I actually applied that glue with a toothpick. So um, rather than using the nozzle of the bottle, which is a little bit too big, uh, I squeeze a little bit of glue out on a card and just use a toothpick and just run the toothpick along the edges. You don't need a lot of that glue, it's very strong. Um, and that's basically uh, starting to come together. So I'm really happy with the way that's coming out. Now what we're going to move on to today is the, uh, the wheels out of the hobby design kit. Uh, we're also going to move on to the uh, how to put the brake rotors uh, and calipers together. Uh, and then we'll look at um, fitting the tyres and actually airbrushing the Pirelli script onto the tyres. Now with all the hobby design parts, uh, they all come with a little moulding tab. Uh, the wheels here have got a big block on the side. You've actually got to sand that off. Uh, I just use my Dremel with a sanding drum and I just sand that off to make it nice and flush. 
Uh, and all the other parts have got a little molding tab as well. So you can see here uh, on this on the back side of this rim, this is a little molding tab. Now a lot of the time they leave that there so you can actually uh, paint it. You can actually put a bulldog clip or uh, some pliers or something and hold that piece and then you can paint it. Uh, and then when you finish painting it, again I just use the Dremel and I just sand that, uh, sand that part off. Um, yeah, so if you're going to paint these wheels uh, with a spray can, then I would suggest painting them separately. So paint the center um, and then paint the, uh, the drum, the outside drum of the wheel as well. Uh, if you're painting with an airbrush like I am, I actually glue the centers in now so I get a good glue bond um, because an airbrush you get a much finer um, amount of spray pattern and paint and you can really get into all these tight little gaps on the wheel with an airbrush. Uh, you just can't get that with a spray can. So, um, as I say, if you're going to paint with a spray can, um, I would paint those parts separately. Uh, and also, if you want to paint uh, the rim of the wheel a different colour, uh, like I've done in the past, you can paint that in one colour, paint the centre in another, and then when the paint's dried, you can glue them together. Um, that's another great thing about these hobby design parts, is it gives you a lot of versatility for the painting. So these wheels I've actually already glued together. So I'm using my Bob Smith Industries uh, Maxi Cure, the pink one. And I'll show you how I do that now. Um, here's one that I've already sanded. As you can see, the sanding marks on there, I've sanded off that little molding block on there. Uh, and the underside of the wheel here, I don't know whether you can see that there. There's a little sanding mark there where I've just carefully sanded that little molding tab off. Uh, not to go through because it is quite thin the wall of the resin here so you just want to sand that and then stop so what I'll do there's actually a there's actually a, a rim on the inside of here and that center fits hard against that so what I will do I will just use my glue and I'll put the nozzle against that rim and not squeezing too much out I'll just turn the wheel and squeeze some glue onto that edge of the rim and then these are a nice tight fit so just be careful when you push them in and not too much pressure you don't want to break the center of the wheel out uh, and that's a front wheel there so that's glued in there so uh, this this cures in about 15 20 seconds so it's pretty quick uh, and these front wheels uh, the spokes are only a little bit in behind uh, the edge of the rim here um, because it's a front wheel so only the back wheels have got more dish and that's basically a wheel glued the tires will just slip over this very easily um, and as I say I will paint these with an airbrush next uh, and then I'll fit the tires and the rear is the same so basically just use, use your super glue um, apply it just along the rim um, try not to get it higher than the rim, otherwise you'll get a glue mark there on your paint or when you paint, you'll get a lump underneath your paint. Um, and yeah, just push that in like I showed you with that first wheel. And that's how the wheels go together. Now the brake rotors. The brake rotors come in a couple of pieces, three pieces in fact, for each one. Now these also, as I said, had a little uh, a moulding lug on there. I have just sanded those moulding lugs off. And I've just pre-painted these black. So this is the back half of the brake rotor. Then you've got a face part, which has got the little dots in it. Um, that's the face of the rotor, but you do have a photo etch part to go over it also. Now this one also has uh, little lugs, two little lugs in the center. Now you don't want to remove those two on the, on the center um, because the wheel uh, clips into that and it, that enables when you turn the wheel it turns the rotor as well so leave those two little ones you can see on the inside there don't cut those off and now these just glue together these two parts so as you can see sideways that gives you your ventilated rotor now to do that I'll just again use some Bob Smith Industries glue and I'll just do a, a light amount in a circle. I don't want to get any in the center. 
And then those two little lugs also in the center will actually guide that to the center. And I'll just hold those together for a couple of seconds. Now, as you can see here, this one, this has actually got the photo etched uh, outer brake surface applied. And you can see those two little lugs in the center. Now that's what the wheel is going to connect into. Um, now, these Aventadors have a carbon ceramic brake, so you can actually paint um, these photo etch parts a darker gray if you want. Um, I just find they stand out a little bit more um, when you've got a full black wheel to have that nice shiny disc in there. So I'm gonna leave them like that. So that's nearly dry. So we'll just put that to a side. So that's the, that's the first two parts together. The front and the rear brakes are different sizes, so you can't mix them up. And then with the photo etch kit, um, this has got the mesh for the front bar in it, some of the wing legs, and also these are the, that's the last brake rotor. So if, get yourself some good, uh, I've got some good Tamiya photo etch scissors here, which are great for cutting through the photo etched mesh. Now you can just put that in there. There's three little tabs to break it loose. Just use the scissors there to cut that out. Like so. Now sometimes you do get the little sharp edges there. I just use a photo etched uh, file just to file the edges when I'm finished. Just get rid of that. And this will actually sleeve over the, the resin part. And then you can see uh, the little bumps all the way around. There's actually uh, those marks in the photo etch there. So that just sleeves over that. So again, I'll just apply a small amount of glue. Not too much, you don't need too much of this glue. Just around there. And then we'll actually stick the photo etched outer brake surface onto the rotor. So we'll just let that dry, just put a bit of pressure on that to hold it together. And that's pretty easy, so that's, that's the easy step um, to glue all the brake rotors together. As you can see there, this one is the front, this is the rear, uh, hopefully you can see that. It's slightly larger the front compared to the rear, um, but they're, they're good to go. So once, once you get the, that step done, uh, your brakes are done. Now with the uh, brake calipers in the kit, we'll start with the front. Uh, these are the little hub pieces. Now I've already glued the caliper on here. So uh, the front, you just get these little hub pieces here. Um, they've already got the holes drilled in them for the steering linkage uh, for the top and bottom, because that'll pivot, pivot through there. It'll just fit into the AutoArt uh, factory model. Now just this hole through the center, um, that didn't go all the way through. So I actually had to, before I glued the brake caliper on, I just used a 1 8th of an inch drill bit. Uh, and I just drilled basically this hole here all the way through. Um, because the, the pin that holds the wheel on needs to go completely through this. So I just drilled that out with a 1 8th of an inch drill bit. Uh, and I did that on both of them. Once you do that, there's also, these parts also have a little molding tab, which continues off in this direction here. Um, I just sanded that off again. There's only a couple of millimeters. Um, you can leave it on if you want, because it is behind the brake caliper here. Uh, and then on the underside of the brake caliper is like the front. So you do have a couple of these little depressions in here. That will sit, uh, you'll find it, it It sits into this little pin here, so you can find the position of it. Now the front calipers, uh, this is the driver's side uh, for a left-hand drive vehicle. Um, you actually want the brake caliper to be angled down slightly. Um, just have a look at some pictures or your, your original auto art wheel. So there we go, that's the... Um, that's the same side, left-hand drive vehicle, um, and you can see that the brake caliper angles down towards the bottom. So once you, once you fit those pieces together, uh, that is the 
left and the right together. I let those dry for a day so they're nice and strong um, and I prefer to glue that on first because it gives me something more to hold uh, and then I can spray paint these brake calipers. Um, I'm going to go with yellow because the, the, the model's yellow so we're going to paint those uh, yellow. Now with the back of the model uh, you've got this uh, big long resin piece. Now this is actually a direct replacement for the auto art piece which is what I'm holding here. So if you see this piece this has just got two screws which comes out from the chassis and this holds the rear wheels calipers all in one piece. Now this piece in the hobby design kit completely replaces that part as you can see there it's it's nearly exactly the same and this again has a a little bracket here for the rear brake caliper to glue onto and you've also got your parking brake tiny little caliper here now these both locate pretty easily onto these tabs the other side has actually got a little molding tab as well so you need to sand those off but just check both sides before you sand the molding tab off uh, so you know what you're dealing with and as you can see there that's the back side there so there's actually some little bumps behind that caliper as well which is, enables it to locate onto this block now again I glue those on um, so they get nice and hard and then I've got something to hold onto and then I can just paint these brake calipers and then I will just hand paint this entire linkage part just in matte black paint. Now the reason I glue those on there and let them sit is because I don't want to play around with the disc brakes and the pins until this has gone hard. So this is basically how it works. So this is a disc brake that we've glued up earlier. This will actually slide up from the bottom and slide in between the calipers if you can see that there and then these pins which come with the hobby design kit as well actually will go through the front and out through the other side so you can see the back of the pin here uh, and this is what enables the, the disc to rotate so that's what's basically going to hold the wheel on so we'll take those out for now. We don't want to glue those in at this stage. It's just as a mock-up so I can show you basically how this works. Uh, and the front's the same. So the front rotors, they're actually, oops, they're actually going to slide into the disc brake there. Uh, and then you're going to have that pin also that goes through the center of the wheel like like so and then your brake disc can turn so that's basically how that's going to work now what I want to show you is where these pins join onto now the back of these wheels uh, you can see there's a little depression here and there's and there's two little cutouts here those two little cutouts there are for those two little tabs in the brake so that it locks into place so that when the wheel uh, when the wheel is fitted with that pin behind the caliper the wheel will turn and the caliper will turn other uh, excuse me the brake rotor will turn with the wheel so what you need to do you need to after you've painted your wheels this little pin glues into the back of the wheel like that so the long pins you get two pins you get short pins and long pins there's the two different sizes there so the long pins will be for the front to go all the way through uh, and the short pins will be for the back. So once you get to that stage, I'll show you that a bit later on, uh, once this pin is glued to the back of the wheel and you fit the wheels to these hubs, 
I'll just show you that. So once that pin is through there, you've got these tiny little pins which will actually glue into the back of that front pin and that'll stop the wheel from falling out. But I don't glue those until everything's painted and assembled. So that's basically going through all of those parts from the wheels to the brakes uh, to fitting the calipers onto all the hub pieces um, and that gives you an idea of how that goes together. Now as I mentioned the uh, this part from Hobby Design which has the new calipers on there that completely replaces this whole rear assembly from the auto art model so um, you can maybe use the tires, the brake calipers, rotors from this for another model. Um, and then the front section, we, we're going to retain this piece. All we're going to do is change these little huckle, uh, hub knuckles, I should say. So we've got a couple of, we've got one screw here. So we'll undo this screw here. Don't lose that because you need that. And then this top section comes off. And then the auto art hubs come out. So we're going to use this piece. And the new hobby design hubs simply replace the auto art hubs. So you want to actually fit your, your wheels to this probably before you go. You're going to need the steering linkage, so this will pop out of these wheels and go into the new tabs for the hobby design uh, linkage. And then this top auto art piece will just go back on. If I can do that. And then you put the screw back together again. So you can see that that is basically, you're just replacing these hub sections here and the wheels with the new hobby design wheels. So those new wheels will go on and then that will screw back into the floor of the model. So that's that's as easy as it gets. Um, nothing really too difficult about that. Uh, so hopefully that will help you out with those steps. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've, um, I've painted the brake calipers here. Um, as I say, it's easier uh, to paint these after they've been glued on. Um, so on here, I've just applied some little small uh, Lamborghini decals. Uh, and I've also painted the front uh, calipers as well yellow, uh, since the model's yellow. And also applied some Lamborghini decals onto the front calipers as well. Now, if you're after those decals, uh, I buy these little decal sheets off eBay from a seller called Global Toy. Um, they have tiny little, uh, whatever, Endless, Brembo, Ferrari, AP Racing, um, and these are quite cheap, these decal sheets, and I get a lot of models out of one of these. So this is, uh, if you're after those little Lamborghini decals, uh, you can find those on eBay. Now, I've gone ahead and painted the wheels with my airbrush, um, which as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's easy to get into all these little spokes when you're using an airbrush. Um, spray can it's a little bit different so um, as I say if you're going to paint it with a spray can uh, spray them in separate pieces and then glue this uh, center into the rim. So these have dried uh, and they're pretty much ready to put the tires on so the tires will just uh, will just slip on so with these hobby design tires uh, the back side uh, you'll see has some molding blocks on it so that is the back of the tire uh, the, the nice smooth clean side is actually the front of the tire uh, and I just basically work from the front and slide them on. Now I'll actually put that against my bench and hold the wheel down um, just so I get the, the tire sitting right on the edge of the wheel uh, and you can see that's it. So as easy as that. Um, they don't need any glue uh, so I wouldn't recommend putting any glue on the tires. Um, because the glue will probably go off before you uh, get your tire on in place. So again, I just push that down on my bench just so the tire sits nicely against the, uh, the rim. So that's the rears. 
and the fronts are exactly the same. Just slip them on. So that's a front there. And one last front. So this is probably one of the easiest steps of the whole build to actually do these. Um, and that is your tire on your wheels. So the next step is to, uh, if, if you want to actually apply the Pirelli script on there, uh, if you want to use a different decal like a Toyo tires or something like that, um, there's quite a few decal manufacturers that make tire decals, so you don't have to um, you don't have to airbrush the Pirelli script on these tires if you don't want. You can find um, decal sheets and actually apply uh, the tire lettering to that. Now, if you want to airbrush it on, um, you do get these little photo etched um, painting decals. It's got tiny little Pirelli P0 letters there. It's basically a stencil. Um, it does have a hole in the middle of it. Um, I put a little bit of tape over that so that I don't get any overspray through that. And basically what you do is you sit it onto the face of the tyre. It's the same, same diameter as the tyre. And what I do, I hold it down in the centre and I just bend the edge a little bit because the tyre the tire is not perfectly square. It's got a bit of a round to it. Um, so I'll just bend that down a little bit to follow the edge of the tyre. And then I'll just basically use my airbrush. Um, I'm no professional at an airbrush. I only bought an airbrush when I started uh, this first hobby design kit that I built. Um, and just using, say, 15 PSI, I just use my airbrush and spray uh, some white, thinned out white paint um, where the cutout letters are. And then when you remove that, you'll end up with the Pirelli script on the tire. Now, if you get it crooked or you're not happy with the position of it, don't worry too much. Uh, I just use some Tamiya thinner and I'll just actually put a cotton stick in the thinner and you can actually just wipe the paint off the tire and you can have another go at it. Um, I found that the X20 Tamiya thinner uh, doesn't hurt the tire. Obviously, if you're going to paint your wheel in a uh, enamel Tamiya enamel, um, be careful when you wipe the tyre that you don't wipe the paint off the resin wheel that you've just painted. So I'm going to go out and um, into the workshop and just airbrush these scripts on uh, and then we'll have a look how it came out. Okay guys, so I'm back uh, from airbrushing the script on there and you can see it's turned out pretty well. These uh, stencils that Hobby Design provide um, are really quite good. Now. A couple of these I actually wasn't happy with it so as I mentioned I got a cotton stick uh, and I actually wiped the paint off and reapplied uh, the lettering and you will also get um, a little bit of overspray on this very edge here so just to clean that up I just use my cotton stick in the Tamiya thinner and I'll just basically wipe it around the edge just to get that little bit of overspray off just to give it more of a crisp edge um, but as you can see, the, the stencils actually work really well. So I've um, done these hobby design kits a, a few times now, um, and I'm getting uh, better at doing this airbrushing. As I say, I'm no professional at the airbrush. I'm reasonably new to the airbrush. Um, and I just basically bought a cheap airbrush uh, off eBay. Uh, this is just a uh, Viola Mart. Um, I think this airbrush was about uh, $38, something like that. You can spend hundreds of dollars on an airbrush, but um, as I say, I paint most of my models with a uh, mini automotive spray gun, so I really only just use this airbrush uh, purely for the tyre letters, so that's why I didn't want to spend too much money. Okay, so now that that's done, I've actually gone ahead and glued uh, the stems into the back of the wheels. Now, the short ones, uh, there's two different length stems. There is the long ones. The long ones go into the front wheels and the short ones go into the back wheels. Now again, I've used my Bob Smith Industries uh, Maxi Cure in the pink bottle. Uh, and I've just put a small dob in the middle of the stem and then just pushed it down and let that dry for an hour or so. Um, so that, that's ready to sleeve onto uh, the brake rotors. So I've done all four. 
You want to make sure if you're just using a plastic cement, um, I don't think that's a strong enough bond. I would highly recommend to use the uh, the Bob Smith Industries super glue. And while I was waiting for that to dry, um, I just did a little few paint outs just in the matte black, um, just around the caliper because when the wheel is on this, you won't be able to get to it. So I just wanted to just just to paint that area out on the back and on the front hubs as well. I've just left the obviously the yellow caliper uh, and just painted those hubs black because it's easier to do that now. Now this is the application of the wheels. So um, get one of your pre-assembled brake rotors and you can actually slide that in. Line the hole up. Now this is a back wheel obviously so that pin uh, is going to slide basically through the hole. Now just turn that slightly with a little bit of downward pressure uh, and you'll feel it drop down and click into uh, the, little, the little tabs there. As I mentioned in, earlier in the video, you've got these two little tabs either side. They actually lock into the back side of the wheel so that uh, when the wheel's on there, you can see the actual rotor turns with the wheel. So that's in its inward position. Now you can see the back of that little stem sticking out of the back. Uh, and you also get the little hobby design pins, tiny little pins there. And oh, I've just dropped it, which you don't want to do. Now that little pin just goes into the back there. Now I, I would just put a little bit of glue on the back of that uh, inside the hole and then drop that pin in. So when that dries, that stops the wheel coming off and now you've got one wheel. So you can go ahead and do that on both sides. Again, just slide your rotor in from the bottom side, find the hole, rotate that wheel slightly until you feel it drop down. This one's being a little bit stubborn. And there it is, it's in. So that is your back wheel assembly with your wheels on. Now that's ready to screw back onto uh, the chassis. So we can get the chassis and screw that back on. Uh, and that's your rear wheel assembly complete. Now the front's basically the same also. Basically you've got your hub there slide your disc brake in, line up your hole as best as you can and then slide that pin down through the middle. Takes a little bit of fiddling to get that while I'm trying to film at the same time. So that's in the hole, so we just want to rotate it, that just drops straight in, That just I felt that click into the disc and now you can see that turns uh, the rotor and the wheel at the same time. And then again, you can see the little uh, grey pin that's coming through. Then you use your other little, uh, put a little drop of glue inside of there. And then drop that little back pin in. And that's basically how the front wheels go into the hubs. And then that will just basically retrofit straight back into the, the front member. Just undo the couple of screws and then that little hub will just sit in there. So once you fit that in there, that is your hobby design wheels and tires um, assembled and fitted into the chassis. The next step, uh, you can just keep assembling your model. Um, if you don't want to do any modification to your interior, um, then you can just start assembling the interior back into the model. Uh, just to give you an update uh, of refitted the back engine lid, uh, I've fitted the uh, engine compartment which all just screws back in. Um, if you forget how it went just go back to my uh, disassembly video of the auto art model and just reverse uh, those steps. Uh, if you've done it right everything just works as it did, um, everything functions as normally. Um, so 
that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to keep assembling, uh, put the window back in, put the bonnet on. Um, there's a little bit of mesh to go in the front bar. Uh, that is on one of the uh, Hobby Design photo etch pieces, the same piece that had the brake rotors in it. It's these two large pieces. Uh, you don't use these other smaller ones. So I just paint these with a little bit of matte black, cut them out with my photo etch scissors, uh, and then glue them into the model. Um, so that's about it. As I say, if you're not going to do anything to your interior, you can pretty much uh, continue to reassemble the model. Uh, the next step, we're actually going to uh, paint. This is the big rear diffuser. Um, you've also got the uh, side sill extension skirt pieces. Uh, and we've also got um, all the front pieces for the front splitter as well. Um, so we'll go through that in the next step. Uh, and then once we paint those, I'll show you how to fit those. Uh, and then you're on the home straight to have your LB Aventador finished. Now the next video, I might try and uh, wrap up all those diffusers and the um, interior repaint in the same video. Um, but we're nearly there, so hopefully you guys are too, uh, and you've had sec success with the, the build of your uh, Hobby Design Liberty Walk Lamborghini Aventador. So stay tuned for part 8, and uh, thanks for watching this how-to video series. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. Um, click the like button if you like the video, and feel free to share it. Um, I'd like as many people as possible to, to have a go at um, building this kit because, as I say, at this stage, um, once we start getting to this, this stage and we start getting wheels in the model, and um, it's a very, very rewarding kit to build. So until next time, stay tuned for uh, part eight, and thanks for watching. Bye now.